It's all been over for months. Meghan and Harry broke up while the story about fake children remained open. Amidst all the PR coming from Meghan and Harry, the truth is gradually coming out that they're hiding something absolutely terrible. Could it be real? All right, so there's an excellent article in today's Daily Mail by the journalist Alison Boshoff, and she's talking about their separation. But before you get all excited like I did, she's just writing about the separation of their brands. I know, anyway. So Meghan and Harry's PR people are telling us that Meghan wants to pursue her celebrity lifestyle, and then Harry wants to be viewed as a global philanthropist. Meghan Markle is telling anybody who will listen, I am 100% a celebrity, and Harry's victim narrative is wearing me down and holding me back. I want people to see who I really am. Mm. Now, according to people in LA, they are quickly headed to divorce court, and these people are a lot closer to the action than the rest of us. One thing that's really adding some weight to this theory is the fact that Meghan Markle did take off her engagement and eternity rings before she went to Beyonce's birthday concert. A source in LA who is in a senior media position said, it is all over. This is what I've been hearing for months. Now, I of course don't have the contacts that the journalist Alison Boshoff has. Instead, I've got to rely on reporters I have met who work mostly for The Sun and the Daily Mail newspapers. But anyway, they're all saying the same thing. And it's supported by stuff from the palace that the two of them are headed in different directions. But apparently there is still one little bump in the road that the palace is trying to figure out. And that's the issue of if Meghan is going to pursue her celebrity career without Harry, and if Harry is traveling all around the world being this global savior, then how in the world are they going to explain away those two invisible kids? And this is still an issue for the royals and their advisors. Now, maybe they can ignore Megan. I mean, at this point, she's basically just a mild irritation. But the invisible children that not one member of the family has ever met are supposedly growing up in California. They have been fooling the public, but can the public be fooled forever? Eventually, people are going to demand answers. Now, the royal family has been portraying Harry as this loving father of two cute but invisible kids who are included, let's remember, in the line of succession. But after he and Meghan get divorced, Harry may never get to see his kids grow up. And how is the royal family going to explain that? There's one royal expert who said, if anything is giving the royal sleepless nights, it's the scam of the kids, which locals living around Windsor Castle are calling it. In other news, last weekend, a photo of Meghan came out wearing a red top driving herself in a big old Range Rover. And it did look like there was somebody sitting next to her in the passenger seat, maybe a bodyguard, after paying WME the joining fee and then all the expenses on extra PR as her stories are being put out there, it has to be costing so much money just for that. Harry had one of their security guys with him when he was in the UK, and I can only assume that he's going to head to Germany with Harry. Now, it was one of the same security guys who was with them during that catastrophic car chase in New York, but the rest of their team seems to have gone the way of the invisible children. Who knows where they are? Could it be they can't afford them anymore, maybe? Now, since Megan has to have what all the other celebrities have, now she's wanting a place in Malibu, and she's going to insist they buy this home before they actually divorce. She keeps on playing Harry to get her way. And let's just see if this divorce really happens this year or if they're going to wait until next year. Who knows? I suspect that Megan has hidden some money using her mother's bank accounts, and I'm guessing she also has multiple bank accounts herself. If you look at their spending habits, though, it's no wonder they're broke. I mean, Megan never loved Harry. She just went after him for fame and money, and she sort of got it. There was no other attraction, though. In so many ways, though, they are a match made in hell. I mean, both of them need some serious psychiatric help. And I keep reading that they're trying to separate their brands. Something about Megan trying to separate from Harry's victimhood narrative. I mean, Harry's victimhood narrative? What is she talking about? And somebody said something like, Megan taught him to be a victim, so they're going to have two separate brands, both focused on victimhood. <laughs> that sounds to me like it's probably the truth. I mean, Megan plays the victim card more than he does. Her stories always focus on how all these people were trying to keep her down and just look at what she had to overcome. Now, the report also explains how broke Megan and Harry really are and why. They pay so much money in mansion maintenance, transport, and mortgage, security. It's ridiculous. Around $45 million apparently per year is necessary. And the list didn't even include what Megan spends on her wardrobe and the staff and all the food they eat. And none of their projects have paid very much. 
Megan understands all too well that the only way that she could really improve her bank account would be using the king. Harry's not going to have enough for her. And if she gets to keep that duchess title after they divorce, which I hope she doesn't, it's going to be worthless anyway. She lives in the U.S. It's not like she's ever going to move to England or any of the Commonwealth countries. And the truth of the matter is, nobody in the U.S. really cares about that title anyway. All right, now we got to talk a little bit about the Invisible Kids. Uh, I mean, I want to say they're not real, but sometimes I do still wonder if maybe they are. There is something, though, that's seriously wrong. If the children were real and if they were healthy and normal, I'm sure Megan and Harry would show them every once in a while. The kids are now old enough so that people should be able to see them sometimes. There is something just so bizarre about this whole situation, something incredibly fishy. I'm going to make a prediction. Now, if this prediction turns out to be right, I'm going to get some kind of credit for it. <laughs> I'm just joking. I think I've got an idea about what Megan's going to do after they finally get divorced. She's going to achieve her dream of being on Real Housewives. I mean, couldn't you see it? She would do great. She would bring the drama for sure. And then eventually, if either child is real, this is how she's going to use that child to make money for herself. I mean, both of them are really disgusting excuses for human beings. Harry believing that anybody would want him as their global ambassador, what a joke. He must still be on those magic mushrooms. On the other side, we need to remember the royal family did not do anything wrong. So I don't think they need to be worried about anything regarding the gruesome twosome. They ended up being victimized because Harry chose to marry this greedy scam artist. They were threatened with accusations of racism if they didn't comply with whatever it was Megan wanted. This situation has been a really horrible one, and they handled it the best they could. They are going to have a strategy for dealing with any revelations about the invisible kids, I am sure. Now see, the thing we need to remember is they didn't have any legal right to say the truth, even if they did know it, there was no pregnancy. So morally, okay, we can be upset with them because they didn't tell us the truth. But legally, it doesn't really matter that we wanted to know. We didn't have that right. As litigious as Meghan and Harry are, they would have sued any member of the family or anybody close to the family who would have made such a claim. And this is why we haven't heard any medical professionals talking about what did or did not happen. Now, there was one husband of a doctor who said they weren't even in town when Archificial was born. The second doctor had to shut down her practice and she basically just disappeared off the face of the earth. Birth certificates are really suspicious in one way or another at every turn. They have been changed. They have been filed where they said the child was born. There are strange names of both the parents and child. The whole thing is just bizarre. But the royal family we've got to admire because they have been so patient. They have kept their dignity throughout this whole mess. And we're just watching Meghan and Harry crash and burn in the court of public opinion. If there's something that we need to hear when it comes to the children, it's not going to come as a shock to many people. And I don't think anybody is going to blame the royal family. Except, of course, for the anti-monarchists out there who are always whining anyway. And they couldn't say anything. Their strategy was to ignore the narcissists other than that brief recollection statement. And this has worked so well for them. And they need to continue with that for the time being. The royal family PR team know what they're doing. They are so experienced in protecting the monarchy. Meghan's PR team can't hold a candle to them. Meghan is an amateur at PR. She doesn't listen to the advice that she pays a lot of money for. And she just jumps from one disaster to the next. Megan is starting to circle the drain, though, at this point. She's trying to find corporations willing to risk their business by working with her, and she's having a hard time finding anybody. She thinks it's going to work to try to get companies to pay her to hawk their products on Instagram. Yeah, good luck with that. And you, what do you think about them? Please tell me your opinion below in the comments. If you think my videos are helpful, don't be afraid to like and share them with your relatives and friends who would love them anytime you want. And don't be afraid to click the subscribe button to get more updates in the future. Thank you so much for tuning in, have a lovely weekend, and we'll be back to see you all tomorrow.